And we're live. And we're live. <laughs> I gave Colin the wrong cue. It was <laughs> way longer than I thought. Give me like a 10 second notice at yeah. 45 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, folks? <coughs> joined by, uh, we're, we're here with Frag Logic, episode 101. I'm joined by a uh, good buddy, the Don. I'm bringing in the new year. <laughs> Skyless, aka Colin. So trying to make the dawn happen. Yep, yep, yep. You guys like that new intro? I threw that together right before the stream, pretty much. Just testing it out to see uh, see how uh, folks liked it. Noticed that I had an echo going. I didn't mute one of the uh, the things on Twitch, so had some double sound there at the beginning. But uh, I'll show it again at the end, just so you guys uh, can see it if you missed it. I know uh, I don't do like a pre-stream whatever to get folks in before we actually start it but uh, i thought i'd show that off um so yeah today we have uh there's a lot of bit of news uh when you say a so lot that, of bit of news i like lot, that there's quite a bit a lot a, of, a lot of bit of news quite a bit of news a lot of bit of news yeah. there's quite a bit of news today uh, <laughs> i've never heard anyone say that my entire uh, life that's good a lot of bit all over the place a lot, a of, lot bit. of bit of news it's a lot of bit you know, mostly Colin. from uh, from CES, CES 2015, yeah, which uh, is the big show for gadgets and gizmos and other G thing. Do do hickeys. Uh, do There you go. I gotta change the current topic. Um. So, uh, you know, we're gonna start off with our weekend gaming, but we have uh, some CES news, some gaming <clears> stuff. <throat> Man, I can't stand that Skype does that that move. That, just moving me down all the time. Um, we have uh, our, some of our games for 2015 kind of continuing on from uh, last week's show. Uh, some news on the systems that also came out of CES, PlayStation Now, uh, and TV, UMG, and UGC? UGC. Yeah. UGC. I always okay. get those mixed up. And then, Colin, I threw in a couple, I threw in a couple movies. I threw in a couple movies nice. uh, that I saw and that, uh, you know, you tweeted me one and then I saw the other one, Channing Tatum sitting there dropping bombs. I saw this, this and one more, actually. So. Okay. All right. So uh, before we get started, let me start off with uh, who's all in the chat. Let me see who's who's in here today. I'm going to get even the lurkers. Uh, so far, we got pot even. What's up? Uh, Tense is in there. Koopo, Teddy, Chris, The One, Brutality, uh, Guilty Remnant, Cho Keller, Sumia, Elite, OJ, Iron Man, War, Hutchie, Not So Hot So. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Big Armada, um, Am Oblivious, Am Oblivious, Amoblith, Amoblivious. I have no idea. It's Bay, Dessens. It's hard to see what that is. is that an O? And uh, awesome guy. What up? I'm oblivious, by the way. Is it? I'm just assuming. Okay. Who's trolling? I was trolling. Oh, you I, were. I, yeah. yeah, you were. Par for the course. Yeah. Uh, so weekend gaming stuff. Um, Destiny for me. Uh, there was a leak that happened. Uh, a so leak. We, so we think there's a leak. I don't know. How was it an actual leak, leak or was it one of we those? Don't, we don't kinda, know. Kinda slip it, it says out. Uh, that they have allegedly uh, leaked Destiny's new content. I'll go ahead and throw that in there. Uh, but it, plan it basically details 2015. It looks like it's taken from uh, an actual meeting. Uh, but I don't. Obviously, you can you can't really confirm it, but uh, there's some some DLC. Uh, there's a box art for the PS4 for Comet, I believe is what it's called. So it looks like it might be a pretty uh, extensive um, update or DLC, whatever it is, expansion. Who knows? Uh, but I I've, I've been playing that this week. Been streaming in the mornings. We did the stream on the weekends. Also played uh, some Donkey Kong uh, Tropical Freeze. Which I did have loaded up, but I had to uh, do a whole bunch of stuff so you guys could see a little bit of that that stream. Um, 
it was interesting. I set up the couch stream, Colin, uh, on Saturday or Sunday. Maybe it was maybe it was even. I think it was Saturday. Hmm. We set up the couch stream. Uh, Still failing at the platformer. It wasn't as bad this time. I was I played a little bit better for some of the folks that came in because I was testing it out. I had to set it up with the laptop and do a whole bunch of stuff out there. Uh, it wasn't a couch stream. I had the couch in the background and I was actually sitting on the floor uh, just to test it out. I had some people call me out on that and I was like, what, I'm testing it. And my daughter was like running around and stuff. So <laughs> I mean, it was pretty cool. Um, there was a couch in the shop though. Which is there the was, there's a couch in the shop. Uh, also played uh, some Halo 5 Guardians, uh, which I mentioned just a second ago. Go ahead and uh, throw this up so you guys can see. I, I don't know how how fast I'm going to be able to do this stuff because I think we need the transitions to get popping off before I can really get good at this. Uh, but let's go ahead and try. So here's some Halo 5. Um, that's from the gameplay that I played out of this breakout. Um, it is uh, pretty much like um, Gears of War's Execution of Warzone. Um, it's single life. Uh, you uh, don't have an objective other than to kill people. So uh, I think in that regard, uh, I'm a little disappointed in that they didn't try something a, a little bit different. I think Colin is going to have some uh, some more thoughts because I haven't played a whole, whole lot. But I have played enough to tell you that I enjoyed it. Uh, enough to uh, be like, yeah, this is a this is a pretty good game mode in in uh, a Halo, but it, I don't think it would be something I would play as like a mainstay. Yeah, I played probably like fifteen or sixteen matches um, after the placement matches. I got placed like just beneath semi pro, like ninety nine percent of the way essentially. Uh, I was carrying people too, by the way. I dropped like I dropped twenty bombs like two or three times. What? I dropped fourteen. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, like, at the end of the day, like, it's the battle rifle rules everything, right? So yeah. whoever grabs the battle rifle just kind of anchors their entire side of the map every single round. Um, the maps were kind of weird uh, in the sense that they don't really drive the action at all. And so, like, when, we, when I got towards the end of it and I was playing, like, good players, no one was moving. And when you did move, you got punished hard because it was right. like, you push, you throw your nade... And then all of a sudden, it's like, shit, they're hurt, but I can't push them anymore because uh, in Breakout, you have low health. Uh, so in Breakout, like, it's really easy to kill people with grenades. It's really easy to like, team fire someone down immediately, pretty much. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you get caught out and they know you're pushing, then you're stuck behind this wall and you have no room to maneuver or wiggle or anything. So you're going to get naded out every single time. So at the end, like, it became evident that the correct play was just sit back for the most part. Um, and they have... In order to drive the action, what they try to do is they place like five grenades in the center of the map. So you're supposed to fight over the grenades and then nade it out. Right. Uh, but it's a lot harder to nade offensively than like use it defensively, I guess. And also, if you go to those nades, you can get naded and die. So I don't know. It was a uh, it was rough. I feel like it needs an objective. <laughs> I feel like this is like based on what you're saying about it being high level campiness. This is what what we saw on some levels at um, you know in Gears of War, but I would have thought like at this point people would get it. You know what I mean? Like you can't you can't make a mode like this and expect at least at a high level of play people to want to move. Like it's gonna be super slow. That's what kind of sucks about it. At least it's two minute rounds. You know what was funny to me, Colin, is I saw Frank the Show from uh, what the hell? What is, no. what is the name of the show they do? Bomb Plant. Bomb Planet. Bomb Planet. He was uh, complaining about ties, and I said, welcome to the Gears of War life. <laughs> <laughs> like, man, if it was only, like, when it was 4v3, you win the round by being yeah, a man yeah. up. Just like, and oh, I was no. Like, no, that, that's even worse. <laughs> no, you don't want that, dude. Trust me. Because then you get a 4v3, dudes running around in circles so they don't die. Yeah. It would be uh, pretty interesting if playing with, like, an organized team that you had actual preset nades and be able to, like, you remember like the old like Ghost Recon days? I don't know if you played much Ghost Recon, but it was like beginning of the match, everyone looks up into the sky and fires their grenade launchers. And like the idea is you have to hit like very specific spots. But if you do it, you can kill them as they leave their spawn. Right. So it'd be pretty interesting seeing how it played out with the team that actually like knew exactly where they needed to throw nades off the bat. 
Uh, and and that brings us to a point we talked about right before the show started. was like, set nades seem like... Uh, and I made the comparison to Counter-Strike. Because that's, that's where I first even learned the term what a set nade was. Was Counter-Strike. And so, in this mode, you think about set nades and... Uh, you think about how the map is designed, it's open, right? Like you could just see everything almost from one end of the map to the next. So it's very easy to throw set nades. There's not really lanes, so to speak. And when you think about a, 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 a game like Counter-Strike and you throw set nades, there's definitive lanes and it makes it much more difficult to get grenade kills, at least in my opinion. And people, obviously, they can't chuck them across the goddamn map uh, in the same way that you can on Halo. So... Um, you know, I feel like nades, uh, like you said, they're definitely, uh, you want to use them offensively, but at the same time, um, the way they kind of have them set, I think if you're organized, it can be kind of devastating, but I don't know if it's going to be better for people to end up playing it defensively with their nades or offensively based off of how, uh, they kind of have things set up. You know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> I, from my experience, it seems like defensive was better. Uh, just because it's the same way we had in Gears. Like, after you throw your grenades, like, you're out. So it's a very much like a, if you use it, you have to get value out of it. Otherwise, you're way behind if the other right. team hasn't used theirs. So, I don't know. I think they're going to have trouble making that mode work. Um, that said, I had some fun playing it. Um, especially when teams weren't as organized and, like, it just became chaos every now and then. Or you had to clutch a 1v2 and they actually pushed you. Right. And they made mistakes, so you actually were able to win. Um, <clears throat> a few times it was just like complete scramble mode, and I'm just punching people. <laughs> like there was a couple plays where it was just like one v three or one v four, and it was just like run around, punch, 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 and then you make it a one v one, you kill them, and it's like okay, that was pretty fun. But realistically, I should have never been able to get away with that shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know it's cool. Uh, they also had uh, two new maps for week two, which is Eden and Regret, which were what they call remixes of um, the maps from last week, Truth and... Uh, why is the other one escaping me right now? Em uh, Empire. Uh, yeah. Empire. Um, which is, they use a lot of the same assets and they kind of like reposition stuff. Um, Regret, I thought was really good. Uh, I had a lot of fun on that. It's like more true to the old midship, where there's like an actual bridge across the top. Uh, obviously there's also one on Eden, um, or on Truth, but... This is like more fortified, so top is a pretty much strong power position. Uh, it seems a little bit smaller, I think, than uh, Truth. Um, gameplay was a lot faster, I felt like, partially because there's like big vertical blockers in the middle of the map, so everything keeps moving. So I thought Truth is, or Regret is probably one of the best maps that they've had so far. Eden didn't really care for. It's like okay. really, really open. And it's hard to see people, it's, it's set at night. And hard to see. It was, hard to see. Yeah, we already talked about how the blue player models in particular are really hard to see. Okay. So at night, it's way worse. So JM is in the chat right now. I got to say what's up to a couple more people. What's up, Chief? Uh, Jackie, <coughs> what's up? So look, this is a shirt that JM sent over. I wore, wore it for the shirt on the back. I believe it says uh, the Frosty Brethren. On the back. <laughs> so I wore for the show. I've got mine at work. I keep forgetting to bring it home. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, man. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I I still haven't gotten to play those. I'm going to play those probably uh, Friday because I'm have i taking the day off from work because I have to get ready for Smite Championships, which I plan on actually recording some stuff and uh, come on back. What's up, uh, Parker? Peoples, what's up? Coop, I already said Koopo. What's up again, Koopo? Uh, who knows is who I'm looking for. Who knows? What's up? Mr. Monkman. What up? What up? Uh, Colin, I think we're on to your games now. Oh, yeah. So I played Halo. Uh, played quite a bit of Halo, actually. Um, played more Heroes of the Storm. The beta starts next week, which will bring rank play. So I'm pretty pumped to get rank play in. He has to be level 30. So if you have Heroes of the Storm and you want to get in on ranked, or really if you want to play with me, I'll say that. If you want to play with me on Heroes of the Storm, got to get to ranked, level 30. Because I'm not playing regular matchmaking when they let the floodgates open and you have four times as many noobs as before. 
So you gotta get ranked. So rank comes out next week uh, with the beta. Probably a new hero and maybe a new battleground as well. Uh, from what they were talking about, uh, that'd be pretty cool. So I've been playing that, getting everyone up to speed. Uh, so a question about Heroes of the Storm for you, Colin. I played it. <clears throat> uh, my account is locked. I don't know if you guys know this. My account is locked. I still haven't called because I'm lazy. Uh, but do you feel like this has the potential to be very big? Yes. I think they're pretty big. Okay. Okay. Uh, would you say Smite big or somewhere in between Smite and Dota or somewhere in between Dota and League? Probably Smite, uh, but they're just going to like immediately be Smite size, right? Just because it's Blizzard. Blizzard, right. So I think it'll be like more along those lines, so, as well as like with the kind of expectation of like what the game is about and how competitive it is. Like I don't think people will expect it to be Dota. I don't think people will expect it to be League. I think it'll be more on like Smite's wheelhouse, where it's just it's a thing, it's popular, um, but it's not like a super esport, you know? Right. Um, but it's pretty fun to play casually, and you get some crazy comebacks and stuff because there are like Mario Kart esque comeback mechanics, right? Right. Uh, also played South Park: Secret Truth, which uh, was on sale for the Steam sale, so I picked it up. I think it was like thirteen bucks. Thirteen bucks. Yep, I got it. Um, too. So I played that for like five hours, six hours, uh, pretty far in, uh, or maybe not far in at all. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's, like it hour. seems like I'm pretty far in. I've almost cleared like the whole uh, first areas. Uh, it's pretty fun. Still getting into like the more depth-oriented part of it, I think. Uh, and then plays more Dota 2. Okay. Dota 2 okay. continually on the list for several years now. <laughs> At least yeah. a year and a half. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and get CES. 2015 I'm just gonna kind of blast through a lot of this stuff I didn't pull down too many images but I do have a couple links to some stuff um, I saw something called the the 3d rudder which is a wobbly board that tracks your feet it's like a controller for your feet uh, let me see if I can pull it up real quick so you guys can actually see the image here it is some people may not know. Motion board. Some people may not know what CES is. So CES is the Consumer Electronics Show. It is uh, held in Las Vegas every year. It's where you get to see all the latest and greatest tech in actually across the whole entire like industry of electronics, from cars to um, appliances to computers to TVs to video games uh, to smartphones. Uh, that's I mean and more. Um, you know, I'm probably missing out on some stuff, but CES is probably the biggest, probably the biggest show, I think, when you think about overall shows, is probably the biggest, because, I mean, even gaming is thrown in there, so it's probably the biggest consumer show that you can go to, arguably. Not by attendance, but in terms of, like, the amount of money. Amount of, right. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I don't believe it's, it's actually... It's a like, lot of big wigs, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, let me see if I can pull this thing up. Uh, do I have to go back to that old monitor thing? I think so. There you go. Here's a, a shot of it. This is from uh, Verge. Take a look at it right there. Um, it seems weird i mean i don't know if i would necessarily use my feet the, the way i kind of thought about it and i don't know all the games that are going to work used with to it food odors. but uh it seemed like it could possibly be uh something that um something like able gamers could use you know what i mean so like if you are disabled and um you know you you need uh to be able to use a controller or something like that you might be able to use this but i don't know uh what all they have planned for it so that's called the 3D Rudder. Uh, Avagant, I think that's how you say that. I believe they're a French company. Uh, Glyph VR headset was uh, another thing that I saw. I actually have a YouTube video. And we're gonna just go ahead and, I don't, I don't wanna post this uh, to the YouTube channel. But there's the YouTube video for it. It looks like a cross between 
Bose headsets with the thin band and like a thin Oculus or something like that. It, it looks like from the from the glasses portion of it, it looks really <laughs> odd, dude. Like, looks like some dude's just an idiot with his headphones on. <laughs> just like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it looks just, like. He looks like the just dude jamming from, on the subway. He looks like the dude from Star uh, Trek. Uh, Data. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is exactly what he looks. He just like. looks like it. Yeah, it looks like an idiot. It looks like he's just uh, goofing off. So, um, look, I, I, I don't. The price is what's getting me, man. Their the pre order is at four ninety nine. Uh, you gotta think that Oculus is coming in at three three hundred and fifty bucks um, when it when it debuts, uh, but that only lasts until January fifteenth. After that, it's five hundred ninety nine dollars after the fifteenth. Uh, and they had a Kickstarter campaign last year where they raised one point five million dollars. Um, it also doubles as a noise canceling headset, which I mentioned looks very very similar to uh, Bose. I mean not Bose. Um, uh, beats by Dre. Beats by Dre is what I'm thinking of. Um, so, if uh, I mean, if I had to make a direct comparison between, at least with the, what they look like, that would probably be the closest one. Yeah. Uh, they're supposed to have built-in head tracking, uh, and they beam 3D images into your retina, Colin. Sounds painful. <laughs> And then we got the AMD FreeSync monitors. Now, when NVIDIA launched their G-Sync uh, monitors, Colin, both you and I talked about that on the show quite a bit. Uh, I want to say we probably talked about it for maybe a good 20 minutes on, on that show. Uh, but for those wondering, here's the article uh, from PC World to the uh, AMD FreeSync monitors. Uh, I what I want to mention about monitors is like I I don't even play on a like a, an HD TV anymore. I've played the last shit. Has it been like seven eight years now? The last seven or eight years, I've only played on monitors. And so uh, the things that you you want to look for, obviously, refresh rate is a huge one. Um, the uh, there are hertz is is another one, and. Um, the, there's there's one more that I can't think of that uh, input lag. There we go. Uh, input lag is the other one I'm thinking about. Uh, the the thing that who was this guy? Oh, bye bye. <laughs> the thing that gets me is um, that AMD and Nvidia continue to go to war. <laughs> That's, that's what I find. And that's what I find funny about it. The, the battlefield is never ending. It's but everywhere. Here's the thing: they, the 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 naming. Yeah. Nvidia has the G Sync. AMD has the Free Sync. Yeah, well, we're the Free Sync. <laughs> and they directly took a jab at them, right? So they're like, uh, one of the things they mentioned is like them being, uh, they're not having a proprietary. Uh, uh, tech behind theirs, right? So proprietary, there we go. Proprietary, proprietary tech behind theirs. And so um, AMD is is equivalent of like open source, just about, right? Like uh, as far as as far as hardware exactly. uh, so licenses go. The manufacturers are not gonna have to go out of their way in order to make their uh, monitors work with AMD. Well they're not gonna have to pay for it is that basically thing. yeah. Um, so if you're interested in monitors, you play on monitors, this is probably something you should check out, uh, when it, when it releases, I don't know the release date on, I don't think I threw it in there on that. I just put, it removes screen tearing. I must've stopped with the notes on that. And then Razer has a whole slew of announcements that they, uh, they had, they, I mean, at the time that I was looking, there was five, so I'm going to just burn through them. The most, I think the most interesting to me Colin you might have a difference of opinion is Forge TV now uh, Forge TV is basically it looks like a little set top box if I had it's like this this is about it's about like this right it's a little set top box um, and 
you hook it up to your uh, TV, basically ask, uh, acts as a streaming um, uh, box. So streams your PC games, eventually it will. Uh, it streams your, uh, and it's Android based, so it's gonna also stream you know, the Android apps and stuff to your TV. Uh, it's pretty, it seems like it's pretty powerful. Uh, it's just the equivalent of Apple TV, Chromecast, Fire TV. Uh, but the, the kicker here is that once they release this Razer Cortex software, you're going to be able to stream your games from your PC onto your TV. And then they have several other products that they've kind of thrown along with that, uh, which is the Serval, I believe is how you say that, Game Controller. Colin, do you know if that's a snake? Is it a snake? Serval? I don't think it is. Actually, yeah, it is. It is a snake. Or no, well, is it S? It's an S Serval, right? That's a cat. Yeah. It's a cat? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so <you're, laughs> I, I thought uh, it was just the console stuff they did snakes f or no no they did snakes for oh, most stuff most stuff almost all everything saber tooth i guess is where they started the cat so I, wonder, I guess that makes sense yeah yeah uh so it's this controller is designed by the same team that did the razor saber tooth it's a full-size gamepad that works with any android device uh that in, it also includes a clip for your phone there's actually a pretty funny shot I saw of it with like this little clip hanging out the back, uh, like an arm, and then it was like holding a phone. Yeah, um, that's how most of those controllers have started doing it. The price of it with the bundle with Forge TV is one forty nine ninety nine, and then separately it sells for seventy nine ninety nine. Um, and then the last thing that they announced was the Razer. Well, there's two more things: the Razer Turret, which was uh, I, I believe we saw that a while ago, but it's like a lap. Uh, keyboard with the fold out mouse pad and you can use your uh, your mouse zombie. Hey, what's up, man? Uh, and then you have the OS VR open source virtual reality, which seemed like that's the one that was getting a lot of buzz Yeah, it's a $200 uh, VR headset uh, Which is entirely open source uh, And they, they insist they insist that they're not trying to compete with oculus and the other VR headsets um, But it kind of does <laughs> just say it uh, but essentially they're saying yeah we're not competing anyone can use our tech anyone can use whatever just develop for it uh, so therefore we're not competing but if you're buying if you're in the market to buy a headset then you're going to pick one or the other right yeah I would think so the last thing the last the very last thing that I have from CES related to gaming Colin. What is it? Did you see this thing? The links? No, the links actually, I haven't, even, I haven't clicked you on it. You haven't seen this I thing? haven't clicked on it, so this is just completely $300. Okay. Holy shit. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> Bravo, Razor, or Mac Cats. Bravo, Mac Cats. Uh, Colin. Do you holy, remember that controller that we shit. looked at and laughed at for like 20 minutes on the show? It was well, that there, green one? There's been like, like four, green, there's been like like four or five. Black one? Is that the, uh, the the leapfrog one? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> trying to, All right. Uh, so are you guys ready for this? Diglett, what's up? You guys ready for this? I hope you guys are ready. Yeah, right. the, <laughs> the, the leapfrog one was the one with the two handles and this, the little circle thing. All right. <laughs> here we go. Here, here it is. This is... <laughs> <laughs> Here is the Mad Cat's Lynx controller. This is just insane. Retailing for $300. This bad boy transforms into various uh, modules that you can utilize with different stuff. See, they have a Curity uh, keyboard. That's one uh, modular design. And they have one where they're holding a uh, phone. It's kind of like the servo. It's kind of what the servo looks like. <laughs> looks like a weapon, Kona. It does. Here's one where it's ho <laughs> where it's holding an iPad or some type of tablet of some it's massive. sort. You'd be like this. Like <laughs> Colin. <laughs> <laughs> That's massive. 
here's here's what this uh, design looks like without the tablet in the middle. Here it is, modularly broken down by uh, piece by piece. It's pretty cool. Uh, to me, controllers are like disposable, though. You know what I mean? Yep. And then you can, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't get a three hundred dollar controller. You can uh, set it up for your tablet to customize everything. So you guys can see the sensitivity, dead zone, percentage, response mode, presets. That's all pretty cool stuff. So it's also um, see what is it? it's wrong wrong. It's also Bluetooth, Bluetooth powered. Uh, has a built-in mic, and it is supposed to have an estimated thirty hours of battery life, and uh, it will be available uh, starting in March. It's when it's supposed to start shipping. So. I don't know how you guys feel about it. I'm reading all kinds types of thing, things about it. I feel like, I feel like we should just do a, a quick viewer rant on, you know, how how folks feel about the Mad Cat's Lynx controller. I'm kind of feeling that. Maybe we'll save that for the end of the show. Does it work with iOS? I'm trying to find anywhere that it says that it works with uh, iPads or iOS. Uh, it just says tablets. Pretty vague on that. Yeah, I mean, it's not explicitly called out. Usually that would mean that it doesn't, right? Right. That's pretty huge. Uh, what do we have? UMG Orlando. And UGC. I didn't watch. Look, I only watched the one match that you showed me. I know Optic won. So congrats to Optic. Yeah, the big surprise of the tournament was probably Stunner. They got uh, second place. First mm -hmm. time for any of those guys getting more than, like, top 12. Uh, so that was, I think, Advanced Warfare's uh, unique gameplay at work is probably what you could probably point to. Uh, also, like, the three best teams online going into the event were the top three teams, according to uh, Pac-Man. So, also interesting, yeah. Uh, Uplink was exciting every single time I saw it. I watched most of Sunday. Um, and obviously that highlight reel which I sent you from uh, so ridiculous <laughs> so from, ridiculous from toast on uh, stunner was absolutely nuts I, it was all uplink like cool stuff around the ball um, it was a good tournament though I actually had a good time watching it uh, and I had I had that tournament up in one screen and then I had the halo tournament in the other screen I spent most of my time watching the cod stuff surprisingly So you're saying old Halo is boring to watch, right? That's not what I'm saying. Because I did watch that as well. I watched the finals. The finals were good. Um, but I also had more fun watching COD, surprisingly. Does still uh, still not as much fun as I have like watching uh, like a CSGO tournament. Wait, or... so, so wait, Colin, I just want to confirm this. You're saying that Call of Duty Advanced Warfare is more fun to watch than old Halo. Slow-ass movement, boring-ass kills. Sure. I think part of it's like the the hype isn't there for me with the new Halo as far as like the teams. Like I have no investment in the teams because I feel like those guys have all been on fucking twenty teams in the time that I've watched them. So it's like I'll see someone like Ogre Two and it's like, man, he's been on like six or seven teams and he's probably on the lower end of people that have shuffled teams. And like when he's not playing like as final boss, I don't really care anymore. Wait, T two, T two is he's straight ripping or that's die. true. That's true. Oh, I didn't see straight because they were out of the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I, yeah, I had more fun watching COD. Um, partially because, like, those maps are really small, so it's, like, lots of action and shooting. I think, yeah, there's lots of delays as well on the UGC stream between matches, which was killing it. Hmm. Yeah, I saw Kona say that. I, I like I said, I watched absolutely none of that. Um, I, I only saw the replays, and I'll probably watch them over the over the course of the week and see what I missed. But uh, I saw that the Halo guys were kind of complaining about uh, free for all because of the tournament. I thought it went till three a.m., which is look. But I thought personally, I thought, man, I remember some tournaments back in the day ending at like two, three o'clock in the morning. But then Colin, you told me what time it was supposed to end. 
Yeah, grand like, finals were scheduled for six, and they finished like, at like two a.m. or three a.m. on Sunday. I was like, oh. oh that's and I think, I think on Friday the free for alls finished at like one or two as well. Uh, which at that point, like, no pro player wants to play, right? Because they don't want to be up all night and have to wake up in the morning to play bracket matches. Right. I like free for all though. Like, I like free for all at tournaments that gives people a chance, gives up and comers a chance, right? To kind yeah. of show the, show what they got outside of their team, you know. Yeah. Uh, but they had trouble with schedules for sure. I feel like the last free for all player I watched on Halo was uh, was it Pistola? I think it was Pistola. Did you Arm watch the Man. championships? HGC championships? No, I'm just I'm just talking about like oh, okay. uh, like that I knew that played and was like good. You know what I mean? I like the old ones on. where where they did one v ones. Like the one v ones were always more exciting to me, or two v twos. Right. Like I prefer both those formats over uh, free for all. Um, do you know who ended up winning UGC? Uh, oh my god, I watched it. Was it Optic? No, I don't think it was. It was denial. Okay. Which was uh, Chig and Mick win. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. I did see that. I did see that because I remember Chig tweeting about it. One of the few Halo guys I follow. I follow like five of them, six of them. Um, and then who won their free-for-all? Do you know? Some dude that I never heard of. Oh, okay. <laughs> which, 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 which should have given him you exposure. Have, yeah. Which Wait, should have given him exposure in my mind. Exactly. Like, oh, yeah, that's an up-and-coming dude. You just made but that instead point. Instead, I was like, I have no idea what his name is. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. So here's some uh, gaming news came pretty much out of uh, CES. I'm going to just put gaming CES uh, console. Um, PlayStation Now and uh, PlayStation TV. So uh, PlayStation Now, Sony announced a subscription program starting in North America on January 13th. Uh, it's supposed to be $20 per month and $45 per quarter. This is basically going to let you uh, play everything in there unlimited. Now, the reason that this is important and $20 per month is a lot of money, right? To me, that's a lot of money. Um, but that being said, Colin, that being said, they have games in there that you can rent for $30 for like six hours. So when I look at it like that, it's like, I'm gonna, let me just take the $20 a month uh, or $45 a quarter or whatever. I, I don't know how much I would use it currently. There's only a couple of games that I would play in there that I would feel like playing going back. But I feel like if you're interested in playing some of those retro games, don't mind them being streamed to you. $20 per month isn't bad as opposed to, you know, some of those ridiculous pricing models that they have in PlayStation Now store. Is it straight streaming? Like you can't, there's no download option for the games? I don't believe there's a download option. That you can't sucks. own. Yeah, I don't think I, you can own any of them. I don't want to stream games. Yeah. I just so, don't. Uh, I mean, there might, there might be a couple that you can buy, maybe. I have to look in there. I have yet to have a good experience streaming games. Uh, the other thing that they now announced was uh, their TV programming, live TV programming uh, service, which is called VU, uh, which basically will bring TV streaming to PS3 and PS4 in early 2015. Uh, they're supposed to have 75 channels per market. Uh, it's going to also include some on-demand content. They had a long list of things like CBS, Fox, uh, some other things. I don't know of the pricing model they didn't i don't think they announced that but uh uh now we're starting to see some of that tv stuff kicking in for sony who was pretty ho-hum about it for a while uh while you know everybody well, they, was, sh was shitting on microsoft yeah i uh, like they had to be right right so now they're starting to come out with that stuff so i think um you know people are probably going to start being like oh yeah you know that's that's gonna be a great deal i need to get my tv Look, I, I'm gonna be. I'm not gonna lie. We got two things from TV, um, and I'm not a. I'm not a cable guy. I cut the cord, um, so Me I don't. Too. I don't get. I don't get cable. I've never. Uh, what, Colin? When's the last time 
With Danny Talladay? Yeah, it's the last time that our household, because we lived together for, what, like four or five years uh, as roommates? Um, Oh, wait. I think, yeah, that was it. 2008, so it's been six, no, eight years? Six years. It's been six years. It was was 08. So it's been six years since we've had cable that I can remember. Or even television, really. Like, I don't think, I haven't had a TV set in my household. Mm. Yeah. It's been Netflix, Amazon, Hulu to some extent. We just got a free trial watching a little bit of that. YouTube. And that's about it for me. Um, and Amazon has probably been taking up the most of my time. So this is actually interesting to me, but not the PlayStation Vue uh, TV. Sling TV, which is going to be Microsoft's, which is by Dish Network. Um, they have uh, an internet box that uh, will be, one, first off, is every Xbox Live user is going to get one free month trial. All right, so it's important to, to mention that. But this one actually has ESPN in the basic package. Do yeah, you, that's pretty cool, being able to stream ESPN. That's the only thing I care about. <laughs> I was looking at everything else. I was like, well, there's there's Disney oh. too, right? But Disney owns ESPN. So like, I was looking at like, I don't want to watch this. I don't care about this. I don't care about this. I'm just going to watch ESPN. I'm just going to sit down, turn on the TV, and I'm just going to watch ESPN. Because that's all I sit there and do now. Like, I'm not interested in traditional TV programming anymore. I don't want to see commercials. I don't care about any of the ads you have. I don't want to TiVo stuff. I don't want to watch it later. Whatever I want to watch, I want to watch it right now. And so, I, I don't know. Anyway, so starting off with the, the more on the Sling TV stuff, again, Microsoft, uh, they're going to, uh, or Xbox, is going to be on, on a lot of other stuff too, because uh, this is from Dish. $20 per month for the basic package, $5 uh, for a month for each additional package. Also, I should mention that the $20 per month is not a contract. You can stop and start anytime you want, which I think is a very good thing that they're doing. You sound like uh, the actual, uh, given the actual marketing pitch. Wait, wait, Colin. Colin <laughs> I just want look, you to remember. <laughs> look, this is why. This is why I want you to rem- remember this. Because when football season ends, that shit's getting cut off. <laughs> I'm going to get, what is it, three weeks of basketball, four weeks of basketball, and then that's it. <laughs> Done. Uh but it's 12 channels to start, launches early 2015, and uh, they'll also have a lot of functionality that, uh, you know, you'll see DVR, stuff like that. So, look, Colin, this might be the first time I actually watched some live TV in six years in well, the household. I've been watching live TV. Yeah, but it's just not through... You're scumbag Colin <laughs> when it comes to that just for football man it's just football <laughs> like, it's just football and occasionally another uh, like basketball or something but rarely almost always football so like realistically if i was able just to get the uh like just the nfl streaming package without having to go through a cable company i would pay for that yeah me too but they don't fucking offer it so i'm still left in the dark i would do look if nfl offered it or if espn offered it I look, they would have my money. Be over that until they do that hundred dollars or whatever, two hundred. Yeah. Till they do, I have no reason to like watch TV. That which just sounds so weird. Like I like, there's a lot of great shows I watch, but like I don't necessarily need to watch Breaking Bad, the very first episode that comes out. I don't need to watch Game of Thrones, the very first episode that comes out live. Like I can just watch it. Still haven't watched it. Yes. Watch it, but I'm just saying. Still haven't watched it. Just, just, just saying. Whatever. I'm not even interested in that one. I just know it's Walking Dead. Same way. I don't care about all the NFL games. I only care about a couple of them because I can watch some of the highlights. That's the thing. That's the thing, Arma. Thing. I'm still annoyed. You have to, Jay. You need to get on KL about uh, watching Game of Thrones. No. I'm trying to get him on it for ages. Oh. Missing out. You call me to destroy your fun. He just like rejects fun. Look. In every uh, capacity. I said, yeah, I don't need to watch Breaking Bad live. I watched <laughs> all the shows, Breaking Bad, so all seasons, seen them all. Uh, 
but I didn't watch it live. The uh, the thing I was going to mention was that uh, oh, I lost my train of thought because it was Colin and, and then I read that comment. It was, uh, oh, Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is supposed to be in IMAX yeah, so uh, theater. There's, Did you see that? It's shown the last two episodes of the last season. Yeah. So I was like, what? It's pretty cool. There. I still want to watch, I mean, like, I want the most recent episodes, right? <laughs> right. So I don't know if I want to go to IMAX just to watch the episodes that I've already seen as a Game of Thrones fan, right? Yep. So pretty cool though. Last fifteen minutes before we hit some of this extra stuff, I'm gonna hit the games, Colin. Okay. Games of 2015. So there's a big list some that big I looked list. at. Uh, this was like hundred. I think Polygon did a hundred games of the year, and I went through that, and then I looked at uh, maybe it was GameSpot or IGN's like list of games that were coming out for the year. And so we mentioned some of them on the show last week when we had uh, Kenny and Barbosa on. Uh, we kind of went through a couple. Colin, you could just kind of yay, nay, give your thoughts on any of these if you've uh, seen any of them. I have a Drift as one. Uh, That's the uh, Gravity game. Gravity game. Where yep. It's actually, just like Gravity. Just need to get movie. Sandra Bullock in there. Yeah. Uh, Batman Arkham Knight we mentioned last week. Battleborn. I don't know if we mentioned that one, Colin. I don't think we did. Uh, but that is uh, Gearbox's, I'm going to call it a MOBA. Uh, shooter MOBA. I'm sure they would protest to it. Yeah, uh, from <laughs> what we've seen. Uh, Crackdown 3, Colin, we didn't mention that, but Crackdown oh, 3 yeah. came out this year. Is it actually scheduled? It's it's on a list that I saw, I think, with IGN it listed. it. That's an Xbox ex- uh, exclusive. Okay. Uh, the Division, we mentioned that last week. Someone in chat mentioned uh, Dragon Ball uh, uh, Xenoverse, which comes out February 17th. Uh, I'll probably end up picking that up, Colin. Play some yeah. fighting game. Do some sparring lab on, on Dragon Ball. Uh, Dreadnought. Colin, have you seen Dreadnought? Have you? I don't think I have. So, uh, the interesting thing is, like, this is from the guys that made Spec Ops The Line. It's like a... I saw it at... What show was that? Oh, Games is this Com. just the game with the giant ships fighting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I saw yeah, it at yeah, Gamescom, yeah. and I was like, oh, shit, this looks badass. It looks like it could be badass, or it could just be really lame, because you're moving super slow. <laughs> it's, <laughs> right. like you, it's like you're flying, like, a, Maybe. like massive battleships, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Which is pretty cool, uh... But then they get rid of like the water constrict, you know, uh, the water restrictions because right. it's all flying ships and stuff. Uh, it seems to be pretty cool. Dying Light is January twenty seventh. Is that the first big game of the year? That might be the first. I'm going to say big in big. quotations. Game of the year. I don't know how big it's going to be. January twenty seventh. That is the uh, Mirror's Edge zombie survival game. Um. At first, I was interested in it, and then the more I saw of it, I just got less and less interested in the game. Yeah. Uh, Evolve is February 10th. We talked about that on the show. H1Z1, I think Kenny mentioned that. Halo 5 Guardians. Heroes of the Storm, potentially this year. Uh, Halo, we talked about. Heroes of the Storm, we talked about. Hotline Miami 2, wrong number. I liked Hotline Miami. I played it on stream a couple times and got my ass whooped in that game but it was fun it's a really fun game uh that's supposed to come out this year human element oh you hear about this game open world online shooter taking place 35 years after a zombie apocalypse yeah yeah. i didn't see much details as far as like the actual gameplay so the reason i thought this was particularly interesting is this is being developed by uh i think it's robotoki how you uh pronounce that that is the studio being developed by uh, or uh, headed by Robert Bowling, who was a community manager at Infinity War for a very long time before uh, people thought this dude was like the CEO of the company uh, at one point um, before he left and then made his own um, studio. And, and now they're making another shooter. So did you play their uh, their mobile game? No, I heard 
good things about it though. It was alright. Okay. <laughs> hey. It was, it was just alright. It was alright. Right. Yeah, there's the people talking it up when it when it came out. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. They went that approach. It was like a it's like a turn based. It's kinda like a that game that we were talking about where you like plan out your strategies and you go into the room, like uh yeah. you breach the room. Uh-huh. So it, it was like that. Um, but it's like a turn-based uh, RTS kind of deal. Okay. okay. Uh, it's pretty cool, but it was... Uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. So, the other, ga- the other game uh, that we didn't mention was Just Cause 3. Now look, I played Just Cause 2. I thought it was pretty sweet, but I didn't really get into the game. I probably played it like maybe like 20, 30 more hours when the community added multiplayer to the game just cause 3 is not going to have multiplayer like it's so fun with multiplayer Colin, it's so fun and now no multiplayer i'm like oh no it's weird with all the community mods they didn't try right that's what i thought so i don't know i kind of got less hype for it the game looks like it's going to be gorgeous probably going to be super over the top if you're a just cause fan I'm, I'm sure it's going to be right up your alley, but after playing the mo- multiplayer mod, I'm a Just Cause fan. After playing that multiplayer mod, I am significantly less interested in them publicly uh, publicly announcing that they're not even working on multiplayer. Like, nah, we don't care about it. Nah. We'll just let some fan do it for us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do it yourself. Uh, and then, let me see. We got Kill Strain, a PS4 MOBA. I had not heard about this game. I had heard of but, it. But... Uh, you know the MOBA craze is strong, still. Um, we had was it Don Gate close shop, mm. closing shop, in the process of closing shop. Think so. Um, look, I, there's going to be plenty more because there's only so much room for all these MOBAs that are coming out. But luckily enough, this will be on P- PlayStation Four, so hopefully, uh, I can see some success. Legend of Zelda on the Wii U, Mario Maker. I remember when I saw this, I got super hype. Mighty Number no. Nine, which is uh, designed by the same guy that made uh, Mega Man, yeah. and uh, I'm super excited for this game. Mega Man's one of my favorite uh, characters that just doesn't get as much love as I feel like he should. Uh, Mortal Kombat X, we didn't mention that. I see the last four games we didn't mention, five games we didn't mention. I have no hype for Mortal Kombat whatsoever. Me either, but it's it was on that list. Uh, people said kill strain looks very weird. You know, let me throw up the chat so people can, we can see this. We're almost all the way through the list, but it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. I haven't looked at kill strain at all. I've never heard of that. Um, no man's sky. Is that confirmed release? I don't think do they've given a release I mean, date, it's, have it's, it, We're talking... It seems like it's going to be 2015. It seems like it's going to be 2015. So I think it's I think it's pretty safe to say it's going to be 2015. Maybe if it's late 2015, sure. End of the year, what, whatever. But, uh, I mean, do, do we... Uh, do I need to say anything about No Man's Sky? I think you've, I already, like you've already hyped it up enough. Okay. Uh, the Order 1886, which I think... I think both Colin and I are not interested in it because the lack of multiplayer. Hold up a second. You were saying order no, is no. PS as PlayStation's I gears. See, right. And I said it looks good. But that doesn't mean that I think the game is going to be PlayStation's good. gears of war. It's going to be great. But did you even hear what I said, though? I said that I said we we're both knocking it because there's no multiplayer. But you still sound excited for it. You still sound excited for it. I said it, it looks good. Are you going to play it? I can get it at a discounted price. Like Shadow of Mordor. I got Shadow of Mordor for 25 bucks. 20 bucks. I'll play I'll play the order 1886 if I get it for 30 bucks. New. <laughs> On you're, not get, you're not gonna get it. <laughs> they quit hyping it up. Saying that it's PlayStation's Gears of War. That's what it looks like. I saw it, man. I saw it. I was at PAX. Colin, do the KO voice again. <laughs> we got we got Overwatch beta, which is supposed to hit this year. 
Overwatch looks. Uh, I don't know. I, I just can't believe how polished that game looks. Like I can't wait to play. I literally uh -huh. can't wait to play Overwatch. Like, might be my number two hyped game this year. Uh, under Battlefront. Battlefront, but, man. Battlefront. <laughs> we're getting there, Colin. We got <laughs> Qu Quantum Break, uh, which is. Look, what what did you think about the 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 gameplay we've seen of Quantum Break so far? Do you remember? So we had somebody linking us gameplay on Twitter. <laughs> He's trying to sell us on it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't remember who that was, and we we're both like, like I think yeah, we both the had same. the same reaction. I said that's the same boring gameplay that I saw <laughs> when I said it was boring. Ah, uh... not feeling it. It's just really dull to me. But people are still uh, on the hype wagon. I don't. I... I think you're setting yourself up for disappointment if you're hyped for that game. That's that's that. That's all I'll say. Yeah, I don't I don't know about Quantum Break right now. Setting yourself up for disappointment. Uh, Rainbow Six Siege. I think we're both moderate. Look, I think we're both approaching this one with caution, moderate yep. excitement. I'll uh, pick it up. Like that's like a that's similar to like my Splinter Cell excitement levels that I had. Okay. Uh, which is, I think I'll get playing time out of it. Um, I'm doubting its ability to last a while, you know what I mean, as a game for me to play. Arma says, dude, you guys need to sign up to Best Buy Gamers Unlocked recently was on sale, but with it you get $60 game for 48 bucks, 20% off of new games. Ooh. That's still not $30, Arma. <laughs> I need that $30 deal. I'll trade in some games. Um... Rise of the Tomb Raider. Somebody had mentioned that. Maybe Kenny mentioned that Tomb Raider, or was that? Uh, Bar that might have been Jason Barbosa. I'm I'm not interested in Tomb Raider. Uh, I played the. I thought it was good, but I I wouldn't buy another one after that. Uh, Colin, you see what I got next on the list, right? This is this is the game that you were talking up. This is the game which this might make your, me buy a week. You, you said that this is like the game of of E3 or whenever it was showed. I think it was. I think that it was the best game that I saw at E3 in terms of getting me excited for a game, which is rough. Like, you guys are seeing, it's pretty hard to get me excited for a this game. Man, this man said the, the, the game of the last generation of console gaming was Gotham City Imposters. This and is I the called same that guy. shit after E3, after I played it for uh, actually a few hours at E3. Look, look, what do you mean you called it? I don't think anybody you can't you can't make a claim that you called something if you're the only other people person. other people like no, it too though. No. It wasn't just me. It wasn't just me that thought it was a great game. <laughs> you you can't It wasn't you, just me that thought that Gotham City Imposters was the shit. Look, I thought it was a phenomenal game, but the game of the gener the game of the <laughs> I, generation? I didn't say that. I said it was the yes, game of the did. year. I said it was the game of the year. No. I never said generation. You did say that. I never said generation. We're gonna go back on that show and find it. Because I thought MNC was better. MNC might be the game of the generation. <laughs> you making these bogus claims, and then he's like, "Yeah, I called that shit." <laughs> I did. I was just the imposters, man. It. Look, tense. Yes, you did. I did not say decade for sure. I don't think I said generation either. I think I said game of the year. Ah. <sighs> This dude, he's backtracking. Anyway, so the anyways, game was... Splatoon might be yeah, the game, Splatoon. which uh, makes me buy a Wii. I, I think it looks you... like it's a fun, fresh, fresh, fresh <laughs> interpretation of the FPS genre. I think that I'm going to be disappointed by its matchmaking <laughs> and its uh, outer game features because it's a Nintendo game, so I'm expecting it. But I think Splatoon looks really good. Looks fun. I... I, I think Splatoon is going to be pretty good. I did I would love to have like a competitive league for Splatoon. I think that'd be the shit. Do you think they're even going to remotely focus on that though? And oh, not at a, all. There's, there may not even be private matches. I have to go get because uh, I'm going to pick up Splatoon. I have to go get a, the, one of their controllers in order to play it. There's no way I'm playing that with the the the, the pad or oh, tablet, yeah. whatever. It, it, or you have, to, you have to go hard. Yeah, there, there's no other way. Like. I like if I'm gonna play, I'm gonna be the best platoon player there is. Oh yeah. Uh, I gotta just read People's Mafia because uh, you know, this is confirmed. He called it. He called it the best game of last gen was Peggle. Called it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Star Fox. 
Uh, I guess Miyamoto said that uh, Star Fox is coming out next year. I didn't realize that he said that. He's quoted saying that Star Fox is coming out 2015. So that's something to look forward to. And probably, Colin, probably the game I may play if EA does not mess it up for at least a couple years. Star <laughs> Wars Battlefront. I hope so. I hope so with all of my heart that I'll be playing it for that long. I, I would like I'm, to play... I am still so apprehensive, but I want to be that excited. Exactly. I want to play Star Wars Battlefront for a couple years. Do you know the last game I played for a couple years? Chat, does anybody know? Anybody? Couple years, two years minimum? The last game I played two years. Should be years. You played Gears 2 for that long? No. No, we, we didn't. We competed for... It was only for... on the circuit one year. Yeah, we competed... Uh... One year. It'd be like a year and a half. I guess if you wanted to split hairs. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I'm splitting those hairs, because that's the last time I did it. And before that was... Battlefield... Uh... Battlefield Modern Combat. We played that a couple years. Did we play that two years? I feel like we did. I think we did. I definitely spent like two years in playtime. <laughs> <laughs> we played so much of that game. The game, oh the game told me I played two years. <laughs> um, other games for 2015, Super Hot, uh, Tekken 7, super hot. super hot, Super Hot, Uncharted 4, Thief's End. That is, I can't wait to play that game. And then last but not least on the list, The Witcher 3. Wild Hunt. Now, I want to add with Witcher 3 that this month on Games for Gold, or is that what it's called? Yeah. Games for Gold, Microsoft's thing. Mm -hmm. uh, they're offering three games. I don't remember the first two games uh, for the life of me, but the other game, which is supposed to flip, I think, in the second half of the month, is uh, The Witcher 2. So, The Witcher 2, you'll be able to get for free this month. Uh, for games for gold, so if you just, is that up, just a like rental type deal? No, I think you download. You actually it. get it. Get it. You actually get it. You have to download it during that time. You can actually have it for free. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's pretty good. Pretty good. I got a Max. Max is in something like that. Something Max. That's the game I got for free. Max. Max in the Brotherhood. The Brotherhood. Brotherhood. I think that's right. Like that. Uh, and last but not least, we got movies. Colin, do, do we have any trailers or anything we can show for these? Because if we do, then I have to turn the, I have I mean, to turn I'm the show sure off. I'm sure there are. People should have seen, I mean, the one movie's been out for a while. Oh, well, yeah. And it was in award conversations, you know? Yeah. All right. So, uh, we'll leave it on for the YouTube folks. Can't show any trailers, but uh, I want to talk about a couple movies that I saw. And I did because you didn't mention them last week because uh, last week wasn't really a movie week. Um, I saw Gone Girl. Yep, I saw uh, that just recently as well. Yeah, and I also saw Equalizer with Denzel Washington. Saw that just this weekend, actually. What do you think about Equalizer? It was, it was pretty good. It was just like a what's the word? I'm looking for. It wasn't like intellectual film. You know what I'm saying? He just whooped their ass. He, he just whooped ass for like a couple hours. <laughs> right. And so I he he was like godlike the entire like with, <laughs> did he get hit like one he was time unbeatable. He, shot in the arm? He was Superman. Yeah, he was shot in the arm, so he just like casually just like all right, let me just uh heat up this thing <laughs> just to seal the wound. And then some dude beat him up. Like kind of that big, that big dude. That yeah, yeah, that's true. He kind of got work there, but that's most about part. It. It's ridiculous. Uh, I was really impressed by that that movie. Like he took down a whole organization, oh, an yeah. entire organization. It's a movie, yeah. Just, in, just in case. I mean, you said you were impressed by it. It's like pretty sure it was written that he should. I was impressed by his <laughs> his level. Pretty sure it was in the script, and it wasn't his, just Denzel really practicing. Really practicing to get to that point. 
Uh, <laughs> here, here's the other thing that's crazy to me about Denzel. This dude is about to turn 60, I think. Is he like really that old? Years old. Yeah. He, that he old? looks. He looks like he's 35. I, uh, I'd say 40s. 40. Yeah. 40. I wouldn't say that young. Though. 40. All right. Then the other like mind blowing movie to me was uh, Gone Girl. I've only I bought it. I actually bought it on Amazon, and I've already watched it twice. Oh. Huh. So I watched it once. And then I was like, I could, look, I watched it and I thought I was going to fall asleep on it because I read like I not read. I saw the title of it and I saw someone tweet about it from from work. And so I was looking at it like gone, girl. I didn't see anything about it again. No TV, guys. No TV, no commercials, no nothing. Didn't know anything about the movie. It's like gone, girl. Why is this person tweeting about gone, girl? That seems like a chick flick. It sounds like a chick flick. I'm a bit embarrassed to say that I thought it was a chick flick for the longest time, which is why I never saw it when people were talking about it for like awards and like best of the year kind of conversations. Yep. yep. Uh, that that was the only reason that I didn't watch it. Uh, and then I like looked it up. I was like, oh yeah, I remember seeing the. Tra- I saw the trailer for it like ages ago, and I remember thinking, oh, that seems pretty interesting. And then like I completely forgot about it entirely. Yeah. There's uh, a yeah. David Fincher, I believe. And uh, uh, there's also a book. It's based on a book. Uh, yeah, I believe so. And the book is written by the married woman, I guess. And so the plot behind this, without giving it too much away, is basically like this guy's wife is super conniving, super intelligent, uh, and like has this wild plan. Without giving it away, if you haven't seen it, just has this fantastical plan that she is able to execute on damn near flawlessly, would you say? Yeah, you're treading on spoiler ground. I am, damn near flawless. Uh, so I thought it was I thought it was good. Like lots of lots of twists and turns, lots of things I didn't expect. Um, and so afterwards, again, I mind you guys, I I thought I was gonna fall asleep watching this movie. I laid there in my bed like this. <laughs> I, I couldn't sleep because I was thinking like, man, what if I met someone that was like that? I would be fucked. <laughs> you guys become Denzel. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Yeah, it was probably the most infuriated I've been at a character in a movie after the movie was done um, that I can remember. And again, like, I'm really careful not to do spoilers or anything. So you guys should see the movie. It's really interesting. Uh but it's probably the most infuriated I've been at a character is the end of that movie uh, for how, how the ending went. Good. So, that was, it was good. I highly recommend checking out that, that movie. Highly recommend it. It's a good movie. It's Gone Girl for those that are half listening. Uh, the other thing, Scarlett Johansson and Ghost in the Shell. Colin, you sent this to us first. Uh, yeah. I just saw the news was like from this week or earlier today. Why are they mad at the character? I I don't want to give it away because it's the thing is it's like it's an Oscar contender and it's very likely to win awards at the Oscars. Uh, so like I just put it on your list. You gotta watch it. I feel like if you've seen the movie, you'll understand like why I might be upset at the character. So I'll say it that way. Uh, so Carrington made a point. He's like he's worried that uh. Basically, Johansson is spread, spreading, spreading herself thin. Yeah, sorry, we just glossed over what the announcement was. It was uh, Scarlett Johansson's going to be, she's confirmed to be the female lead for uh, Ghost in the Shell, yep. which is a live-action adaptation of the... Uh, anime. I assume it's the anime and not the uh, I the hope book. it's the anime. Everyone, That's what everyone is That's what everyone, everyone knows, to. right? Yeah. yeah. So... Uh, Seems like a good cast in Ghost terms of being one of my favorite animes. Specifically, yeah. it's a good cast if you want the movie to get made. <laughs> yeah. Because otherwise, it was kind of like, yeah, no one's ever going to make that movie because it is so abstract, the entire series, right? Yeah. So. I'm trying to figure out, like. It's a good cast for it getting made. I don't know how they're going to do that movie. Like, just thinking about it, they're going to have trouble doing that movie. 
uh, the, the, that movie and the, look the one that I always want this is my favorite movie probably the most iconic Akira yeah did you see the fan made um, fan made live action for that I haven't I'll have to link it to you it's pretty well done and it made me want an actual movie I feel like that could turn that could actually be a movie um, I think the tech is there I think that it would visually look good, and I don't want to watch Kanye West's. However, you uh, do the last scene though is going to be. I don't know how you do that. I don't know. Be hard to pull off. Yeah, but still, yeah. it's possible. You could. Um, and then Channing Tatum, uh, basically tweeted out the release date of Gambit. He'll be playing Gambit, uh, which is going to be Fox's Gambit. That I think that's the information on it, and that'll be October seventh, two twenty sixteen. I don't. I love Gambit. I really do. Like one of my favorite Marvel characters. Or, uh, he hasn't. He hasn't been done justice like, though. Yeah, I. I feel like every time they disrespect him. <laughs> like he's he was disrespected in that. Uh, that fucking. The, was it uh, Wolverine. I think it was Wolverine Origins. Yeah. Disrespected. So. <laughs> Motor says, "Wow, Amy movies. seems like a total bit." <laughs> it's true. So, uh, that's all we got for today's show. We can head to Q and A. We got the chat up. Oops, oh, I want that is that box. Yeah. No, we're questions. talking about movies. Um, uh, got questions? Let us know. Q and A session. And then I'll make sure I queue up that uh, video. You guys can check it out. If you uh, missed it towards the uh, end of the show or the beginning of the show, rather. A stripper gambit <laughs> and before Mark Wahlberg is rock most anticipated movie that has been announced uh, probably Avengers Age of Ultron for me Um, question: What's better, Gotham City Imposters or Peggle? I feel like Peggle revolution revolutionized um, the genre. I don't know if Gotham City Imposters did. I would say Peggle. Probably Jupiter Ascending for me for upcoming. I think it'll be adequate amount of camp for me. I don't. Colin, why that movie? I just I think that's it. I think it's the highest on my list. I can't think of another one off the top of my head. I'm getting like some Sucker Punch vibes, and even though like a lot of people rip on Sucker Punch, I didn't like Sucker is, Punch at all. Colin is one of my favorite movies. It's it's up there. So I actually really enjoyed Sucker Punch. I get some kind of like Sucker Punchy vibes from Jupiter Ascending. <laughs> JM, did the Gears Link I sent in particular, did you see the three new game types? What you think? I saw it. Uh, it seems okay. I didn't. I didn't read uh, the last game mode or whatever it was. What Ubisoft title are you most excited for? The Division or Rainbow Six Siege? I think the division has more opportunity to do like really interesting stuff. I think Siege is more likely to execute the stuff they're trying to do. So I don't know, it's toss up. I think like division has highest potential to surprise me and be like really, really, really good. And Siege has the best potential to just be a solid game that I enjoy playing for a while. That's my two cents. I'm worried division's just going to be like a single player game. That's my biggest worry. Oh no, Colin, they showed all those multiplayer elements. I know. I think there's a high chance that they fuck that up. We'll see. 
Gotta see the Ant Man trailer tonight. I have not seen it. It's Bay, not yet. <laughs> Jeez, there's Justice League. He says Jupiter ascending. What do you think? <laughs> Stylus is into girls dressed as school girls. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not true, man. It's partially true. <laughs> But I mean, there was a uh, there's a lot of action. Like I enjoy how it like uh, it's very much like a video game movie in the sense that like the the set pieces are very video gamey. Brutality so. loves sucker punch. Yeah, see, not the only one. Other people are out there for the sucker punch uh, defense. <laughs> Have either of you watched the anime Black Lagoon? It was a there was a I period haven't. of time when I watched. And my brother can attest to this if he's still in the stream. I must have sought out and watched every single anime that I possibly could. And I couldn't actually tell you if I watched that or not. Because I don't remember the titles of all of them. Like, I was trying to watch the entire season of... I watched Inuyasha. Um, the Tosai. Um, how was that? Um, Ken... Ken... Ken Roche? Ken something? Some vampire animes. Macross. Um, there's so many mech made, uh, Al the alchemist. Oh man, I watched a ton of them, man. I, I couldn't alchemist. tell you. I, I can't remember it. Uh, James, what go. game would you say <laughs> made you a gamer? Alan, what game made you a gamer? Fuck. Yahoo Pool. Oh yeah, that, I forgot. That was the first, that was the first game I played a ton. I played, uh, Yahoo Pool back when I was like 11. And then, uh, although, like, before that, I had, uh, like, I had Mario and stuff when I was younger. Like, way after. I wasn't rich enough to have uh, consoles when they came out. But I had them, like, the next generation after, you know? So that's why I played the NES, was when the SNES came out. I'd always, like, go over to friends' houses and play uh, SNES. So I guess I was a gamer long before that. But, like, the first game that I remember going, like, super hard on was I played, like, uh, 2,500 games of Yahoo Pool. It's actually probably higher. It's probably like four thousand across the two accounts that I played on, and that was uh, and that was like a uh, ladder play and tournament play. That sounds too. ridiculous. And around the same time, that uh, much pool. it was a lot, man. And then uh, that was my training for Carom 3D, which led to uh, my World Cyber Games uh, Team USA appearance. <laughs> so Yahoo Pool paid off uh, in the end. What's up, Lunars? Uh, See, I got some more Sucker Punch fans. Here we go. Who else? Uh, it says, uh, Memphis Finest says, my wife likes Sucker Punch. Dr. Diggler says he has it on Blu-ray. I'm not, I'm, look, all right. Uh, I know we missed a few questions. Q&A, Brutality, do you expect this year to be full of patches for new games, i.e. Halo, AC, or do you think companies will take more of a care of finishing first? Well, we've already gotten a couple delays, right? Like, Evolve delayed, Witcher delayed, uh, Division delayed, uh, Destiny was delayed. Uh, I mean, there's already been some game delays. I, so I think like people, uh, Battle Battlefield Hardline was delayed. So I think companies are definitely thinking about it. EA came out and said like, what's that CEO's name? I don't know. Anyway, their new CEO uh, was like, we're we're gonna fundamentally do things differently and stuff like that. So I don't know. I don't know if it's all like fluff. I don't know if like it's like Colin was saying it's it's new, new console. So you know the developers getting used to it. Who knows? Uh, I I think we'll probably see the same amount that we see every year. It's gonna take a few years for people for the industry to start like adapting to um, some of the issues that have kind of arisen. But it's also issues that occur on every new console launch, um, and primarily the issues that you see are specific to consoles. Uh, you aren't seeing a lot of PC games have these big launch failures uh, outside of like MMOs where it's with the territory, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yahoo Pool, Jupiter setting Sucker Punch. Skylas has some unique tastes. <laughs> I know we missed some um, questions. You guys are firing them off today. What do you think about next gen gaming being broken or remade games? Isn't that that's pretty similar to current gen or last gen? 
Uh, we had talked about uh, before the Xbox One came out that like the last unique shooter that had come out, or last like a uh, fresh IP shooter, was like five or six years ago when the uh, when Titanfall came out. Yeah. Uh, so it's not a new issue. Twenty fifteen. There should not be an excuse for broken matchmaking. Matchmaking is hard. I think. I think matchmaking is hard. Like, as evident behind all the the studios. I mean, every studio, every now and again, gets it right, knocks it out the park. But as evident by like so many issues happening, um, whether that be from matchmaking or the actual services behind, be it PSN or Xbox Live being down, whatever the case may be, that's also being a bottleneck. Uh, it seems like it's challenging to get people in games online. Testing it's really hard. Yeah, that's the other thing. Makes it really difficult. Halo MCC did something that has never been done before. So, Xmoda, and we had Rabbit Tricks. He sent me a tweet uh, not too long ago, and he was talking about Orange Box. Orange Box lot did did it launch with separate discs, or it was all in one, and then you selected it at launch. If I remember right. So Orange Box actually had five games on disc, I believe: Half Life Two, Portal, Team Fortress, something else, all on one disc. Yeah, but there wasn't a unified UI it wasn't for them. Unified, yeah. Like it wasn't once you unified once you launched into the game, you were in that engine. Right. Um, a lot of Halo's uniqueness is the unified UI, where you immediately boot between each mm -hmm. um, from a separate, uh, entirely different thing. And I'm only bringing it up as as Rabbit Tricks's point to me, um, because he wanted to he wanted to try to make that argument. Or actually, he just asked me how they had done it. I wasn't even trying to argue for it. He asked me how they had done it. Lunars, Arctic Goddess, what do you think about Xbox One dashboard still D? I just want it to be more responsive. I don't, I don't care about any other features. Just make it more responsive. It's really slow to be able to invite friends to matches and stuff. That's partially responsiveness, partially just the flow. And that's really all I need to do. <laughs> Alright, Colin, you get two questions, and then I'll get, well, you, you, I'm just saying you pick two questions. Okay, uh, do you think the rise of online lets developers get away with releasing games unfinished? I think that the ease of being able to patch stuff uh, really quickly um, has created a situation where you're able to actually get fixes out. Like... What people forget is that like uh, games in the SNES era or in the PlayStation era, they had broken issues all the time. Like there was issues pretty frequently for those games as well. And you think about like speedrunners and like all the glitches that they exploit in order to beat the games and stuff. That's all stuff which couldn't get patched before. So I don't think it was highlighted as much as it is now. Um, but as far as like online services and that kind of stuff, I think that the ease of patching and the ease of having, uh, again, like, like I said earlier, like it's really hard to test matchmaking systems without actual people. Uh, so it is something where it's like, hey, we know we can throw this out, we can get some quick feedback on it, we can get testing in, and then we can make our changes relatively safely. Uh, I think that's definitely easier now, and I think that's... Uh, I don't like the term, like, get away with releasing games unfinished. I don't think that's the intent as much as it is, like... We can't possibly test everything with these new complex systems. Uh, so the current rise of online gaming or the increase of ease of patching and network stuff uh, makes it easier to address those issues. Hey, this, another thing I want to mention is like, think about how much information you can access instantly now as opposed to, like Colin said, PlayStation, Nintendo... Hell, up until maybe like 2004, really, it was. I mean, you could what, what people went on fucking game facts, right? Yeah. The access to information now is so instantaneous that if there is a broken issue, it get it gets magnified like twenty fold as opposed to 
back in 10 years ago, there, there, that shit didn't happen. Like, you didn't have an issue that everybody was like, one or two, like a dude came over, it's like, hey, I got this new, this new thing I found out. I was reading up on something. And then you guys tried and beat it. Like, there wasn't mass millions of people that, that played a game that could figure out how to do something because they read a tweet or saw somebody post it on YouTube or do all this. Like that, The most utility one is your friend, right? Like, that is crazy be it. You now. You just call over like, your friend and be like, hey, check this out real quick. I think people don't I think people underestimate how fast things steamroll now and how much faster things happen um, because back then it, it just wasn't like that like we're talking 10 years ago it wasn't like that so it's very I, I, I don't want to say unfair but it's hard to keep up with the pace of technology when you're essentially making a same type of you're building in the same process that you that you did 10 years ago almost it's just on new hardware. It's also bred a culture of complaining as a result. Yes. Like I think yes. that's very evident to anyone who kind of follows this stuff. Um, so there's lots of uh, platforms for criticism, including the show. Exactly. <laughs> we can have this 10 years. Like, we would be on a podcast 10 years ago. Oh, if that. Download. Be uh, writing blogs. <laughs> no, this is even pre blog. We'd be writing uh, GeoCities web pages. <laughs> And Colin, when's your next stream? I don't know, man. I'm not. Uh, I'm not on that stream grind. Why, Colin? It's just uh, like here's the thing. If I'm streaming and no one's like talking in chat, I just get to like, what's the point of me streaming? I'm not trying to be like big or famous or anything. I just want to interact with people. Like that's uh, the primary reason that I stream. It's like when that's not happening, like I'm less likely to stream. And then as a side effect, when I'm not streaming, it's less likely to happen. So. I just tend not to stream. So every now and then I'll throw it up if uh, something new or interesting as a topic comes up. But I don't like uh, streaming daily. <laughs> or that news, a newsletter, or that meeting. Stream some Yahoo Stop. Pool. <laughs> and you guys will be stunned by my Yahoo Pool skills. Oh, 1v1. Yahoo Pool. Yahoo Pool? Next 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 show. 1v1, <laughs> Yahoo Pool. You get destroyed. 1v1. It wouldn't Yahoo even be pool. close. No sticks. <laughs> no, no sticks. erasers. No erasers. The eight ball and the white ball. <laughs> Have you ever played pool in your life? Have you ever even watched pool? <laughs> yeah. I played pool. He says no erasers. <laughs> it's chalk, man. <laughs> chalk, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no Chuck. erasers. Uh, Chuck. <laughs> uh. Oh man. Is there anything else? Anything else? Lunars? Mark Descalis, how do you feel about Gears of War 3 still being kept alive? Last question going to be Gears. Uh, for me, feel about being kept alive. What does that mean? I, I'm not sure what that means. Uh, I I'm assuming you're talking about like players still playing it, and, and tournaments still being had. Uh, look, like, what is the oldest game that still has tournaments right now? Like Street Fighter stuff. I don't know. I I mean, look, if the community is there, I'm, I'm more power to them. I don't care. Like. That's the thing I feel like with, with these some of these titles is like there are communities that have been around for a really long time and a lot of it gets taken for granted. Counter-Strike was a really good example. Those dudes were still playing 1.6. Source was out. They were still playing a little bit when initially when CSGO came out and then they started, you know, adopting over. So, look, if they if the community can keep it going, I think it's, it's awesome. I think it's a silly question. How do you feel Why? about a game being kept alive? What does that mean? How do I feel about people enjoying playing a game? That's ridiculous. How do I feel about like Unreal Tournament being kept alive all these years by people playing Unreal Tournament? Like, good for them. They're enjoying the game. So it's anybody any game, really. All right. That's about it. I think that's all we got. All right, folks. I'm going to let you all watch uh, the...
intro that we had as an outro if you missed it so stick around after <laughs> after the show to uh to check this out um we're gonna sign off now hope to see you guys next week you guys know i'll be streaming uh tomorrow morning got my morning stream breakfast club colin is what we're calling it now 6 a.m i don't know man. i don't know how you get i don't know how you wake up i don't know how you play i don't know anyone wakes up to watch that that's rough wake up dude <laughs> i wake up 10 minutes before i have to go to work <laughs> <laughs> all right here we go later guys <laughs>